Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to add a mighty fourth page to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia by examining the Sube Sube no Mi. The Sube Sube no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that makes the user's body absurdly smooth and slippery. It was eaten by classic One Piece antagonist Alveda and first put on full display during the Log Town arc. The fruit derives its name for the Japanese word for smooth being sube. It has also been hypothesized that it could be a reference to suberin, a particular fat that is defined by Google as an inert, impermeable, waxy substance present in the cell walls of corky tissues. So take that as you will. But back to things that make sense, in Japanese sube sube can also mean young and sexy, which is surprisingly relevant and we'll get to that in a bit, but not before we take note that this fruit has been labeled differently between English translations, with 4Kids and Viz initially dubbing it the Slip Slip Fruit, while Funimation amended it to be the Smooth Smooth Fruit. Alright, so this fruit is a bit of an odd one and often gets underestimated within the One Piece fan base, even by me actually. Early on in the life of this channel, I placed the Sube Sube no Mi on my top 5 worst devil fruits list, and I'm not entirely sure it belongs there anymore, but let's examine it. Like I said, it's a bit of a weird one. While the advantages of becoming a human bar of wet soap aren't initially apparent, they are certainly there. And a key passive asset right off the bat is the fact that the user's body becomes so slippery that any attacks either by weapon or by hand just sort of slip off rather than strike the user's body. And that is a pretty crazy immunity because it essentially means that a user of the Sube Sube no Mi can't actually be hit by anything that isn't sea stone or haki imbued. On the other hand, this would also severely limit the combat capabilities of the user, at least in the realm of hand to hand. For example, if Luffy had this fruit, he'd just never be able to punch anything because his fist would slip right off. Although at this stage, I should say that there is always the potential that the user of the Sube Sube no Mi is able to control the level of slipperiness of their body at any given point, but this is pretty difficult to confirm because the series has never gone into too much depth regarding this fruit. The user may indeed be able to control their own varying levels of slippery, and some evidence to suggest this is that Alveda is able to actually wield her giant club, when in theory if her body was 100% slippery all the time, then she shouldn't be able to touch anything, let alone hold an object. Furthermore, not only is Alveda able to wear clothes, but her clothing actually takes on the properties of her devil fruit, in a similar manner to which we've seen with a lot of Logia types. So we can only assume that the user has a certain level of control when it comes to choosing when and how to activate their abilities. And now we really can't go much further without drawing attention to the fact that this devil fruit is one of the very rare ones that comes with a physical side effect. And in order to demonstrate this, we are going to examine a before and after shot of Alveda. Yes, apparently if you partake in the Sube Sube no Mi, then it comes with the involuntary aspect of all excess fat simply slipping off your body. Why do I say it's involuntary? Well, that's because Alveda had a pretty damn high opinion of herself prior to consuming the Sube Sube no Mi. In fact, she saw herself as the most beautiful woman in all of the sea. Well, seas, I guess, in one piece. So I doubt that she would have gone through such a radical change willingly. In fact, Alveda herself even claimed that consuming the fruit did not improve her beauty too much. And, uh, well, you, you guys can be the judge of that one. Also, she lost her freckles. I guess they just slipped off her somehow, because that's, that's how freckles work. Actually, you know what? Probably the biggest benefit to eating this fruit would be the enhanced ability to, well, eat. You'd essentially be able to eat as much as you'd like without the fear of weight gain, but at the same time, fat is not the only nutrient to be aware of, so you'd still have to be very careful with your diet. But back to being slippery. Another interesting way to use a massive reduction in friction would be by speeding up your means of travel. So essentially you'd just be able to use your feet to slide anywhere you want just by using inertia. So I guess you would need a ramp or a hill or something to start you off. And also this comes with the potential danger of losing control of your speed and colliding with something big and heavy. Although I suppose if you were to run into a building or something, you might just slip right off the building. But if not, you'd certainly take some pretty considerable damage. With all of this in mind, I'm not entirely sure how much more creative opportunity there is to be had with this fruit. Making yourself slippery is cool and all, but it sort of acts like a Midas touch, making it more difficult to interact with the general world around you. Of course, the world can't really react with you either, thus resulting in immunity to most physical damage, which cannot be understated, that is absolutely amazing, but I'm not sure if it's worth the incurred cost of consuming the fruit. And sadly, we see a lack of creative options reflected pretty clearly in Alveda's personal use of the fruit. She essentially just takes advantage of the damage immunity whilst not really finding a way to capitalize on the fruit powers in any sort of offensive or even practical manner. I mean it's great that she can use her slipperiness to travel at amazing speeds, but in order to do so she needs to carry around a giant ramp to launch off. That's that's a pretty impractical condition to need to meet, and otherwise she hasn't really made use of the fruit at all. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a slippery human. Despite being primarily invulnerable, there are certainly ways that you could be captured as a slippery human, which was demonstrated when Smoker was able to restrain Alveda using his smoke abilities. 
While your new slippery properties might seem to melt fat right off, it has no effect on muscles, and the user will retain any previous strength they had prior to the consumption of the fruit. So that's pretty amazing. Although the properties of the Sube Sube no Mi extend to clothing, it may or may not affect a user's shoes, as shown when Alvida needed to remove her sandals in order to use her slippery skaty travel mechanism. So to wrap this up, the Sube Sube no Mi isn't particularly great in my opinion. I just don't think it offers enough potential for developing a diverse skill set. There's a pretty strong immediate benefit in the terms of the weight loss it offers, so it's a nice quick fix to obesity if that's an issue you struggle with. Otherwise, I'm not too sure that the average human being will find a lot of use in consuming this fruit. Certainly not when compared to most others, and it's one of the very few devil fruits I would actually think twice about eating if it was offered to me. And with that, we are going to commit the Sube Sube no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week we will be examining the Kilo Kilo no Mi, a rather interesting paramecia type that gives the user supreme control of their weight. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to like, favorite or subscribe and if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel then do check out my Patreon, Discord server or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally please do comment with your thoughts on the Sube Sube no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.